So here we are. We are getting the rods prepared. First thing I have to do is I have these ARP rod bolts. It's a rod bolt kit. Here's the little instructions for it, or, or torque specs, whatever you want to call it. So I gotta take this kit here. I gotta take the rods. I gotta take all the bolts out of them, and then uh, replace them with these ARP bolts. And I'm doing this first before having them checked. And there's a solid reason for that, and that is the distance or, or the circle here, the, the where the bearing actually goes. So right here. If I were to use the factory bolts, which are these guys here, they have this goofy collar, and I'll show you what that reason is in a minute. Uh, but if I were to use the factory bolts, they torque to whatever X number of torque, right? And they're a softer material, so they're going to stretch. They're probably a torque to yield bolt. I don't remember. I even I don't think I've actually torqued more than one of these. Uh, I had one that I had to do something on a truck. But anyway, uh, I don't think I've actually really torqued stock bolts, but I'm. I'm willing to guess that it's a torque to yield, so you torque it so much, then you crank it so many degrees, and it stretches the bolt out, right? Well, if it's not that, I don't care. Regardless, the torque is going to be different on these bolts than what these bolts are. So these bolts are going to distort the main cap differently than what those bolts are. So I want to put these bolts in in order to make sure that they're distorted correctly when I have them checked. Um, there should be enough room, uh, this should be a little bit on the tight side from the factory, and I should have enough room that they can take, throw it in their hone machine, and their hone machine, it's like a, it's got a deal sticking out, a peg sticking out, right, and it rotates, and the hone comes through like this, and then there's a, a piece that it goes up against, so it goes up there, and then they turn this machine on, and they, they just work it back and forth like this on the hone, where that rod is against there, okay? And that hone will just open this up a little bit and make it round again. So it's got, I think, if I remember correctly, it's got two stones, and then it's got two, I don't know if you call them brooches or what, but it, they are geared to the stones. So it makes sure that it's an actual circle when it's complete. Uh, so I'm gonna take it in and have that done, and then they're gonna do the same thing on this end, on the ones that are tight, and replace the bushings on the ones that are loose. So right now I'm just doing that process. Going ahead and throwing all these bolts in. Now being their ARP bolts, they require ARP loop. And they give you two options on this place card as to what you could do. Um, I do not have the bolt stretch tool yet. I plan on getting one. It's just a matter of time. But it says, ARP recommends using the stretch method when tightening rod bolts. Following the instructions for using a stretch gauge, stretch the bolts to 0 .0065 to 0.0070, and that's in inches. If you do not have a stretch gauge, torque the bolts to 45 foot-pounds using ARP Ultra Torque Fastener Assembly Lubricant. This is their ARP Assembly Lubricant. Uh, a log should be kept on the original non-torqued length of each bolt. Uh, bolts that have any permanent deformation or have increased in non-torqued length by more than 0 0.01 of an inch should be replaced. The reason that's really there is more for people who are pulling their motors apart for refreshes quite often. This is probably going to be the last time this motor is put together. Uh, it's not likely it'll be taken apart. If it is, it'll be once and that, uh, you know, one more time, and that'll be it kind of a thing. Um, the bolts are not likely to stretch in that time frame. I have had some motors where I've had to take them apart several times, and when that happens, I have uh, taken the bolts and just tossed them. So once they get so old, instead of having the stretch tool, since I don't have the stretch tool, after like three refreshes, I just get a new one. They may, I might be doing it too often. I might not. I don't, I don't know. I just rather not risk it. Now those collars right here, those are what's keeping this bolt from coming out. So it doesn't come out, it just stops, right? So that collar is smaller than the threads on there. Uh, the threads apparently stick out a little, uh, yeah I can feel it. the threads stick out a little bit. So that can't come out of there. This collar is pressed into the, the hole of the rod. So all I gotta do, take a little punch, whatever, doesn't take much straight out. I mean you can see I'm using a pretty small hammer. I'm just holding the rod cap. It's not like I'm putting it in a vise or anything. And they come out pretty easy. 
So that's all it takes to pop those out of there. And then you can throw them in the junk. And here's that rod cap. Now here's that crocked rod thing. Crocked, cracked rod. Wow. Cracked rod thing I was talking about earlier. Um, so see it sits seamless right now. You, you can't even hardly see the seam for where the, if I do that it's gone pretty much. But there's the crack, right? Now let's do this. Look at that. Not even a close to a match. I mean, it is so far off. So you cannot screw these rods up. And if they're off at all, you can see the crack. Once they're on the right spot, there, the crack pretty much disappears. You might notice when I put the ARP lube on, I just put a little bit on the end of the threads and a little bit on the top of the head. stirs up will fall back down on something but most of it will end up on the floor and then when I'm off the floor it'll be nice and clean so that's why I'm blowing everything around uh, before I start building the motor before I even clean the parts I have the parts laying over there on the floor and I will be cleaning those next now I just set those boxes there you can see how filthy they are. So that's all the stuff that I took down from up above where I was blowing around. Even you're extremely dirty. stuff and prepare all the parts and on top of that I have to mop several times. I'm going to do an extraordinary job on this round with this motor. Um, usually I make sure the area is clean and I try and stir up as little dust as possible and then I do the motor but this time I'm going to go above and beyond because my shop is overdue for a big cleaning. as the locks, the rings, the 
the reciprocating mass. They do a you know end-to-end -end balance. Uh, they make sure everything's exactly perfect. Now these are factory rods, and one of these I had to replace. So the thing is, one of these measured incorrectly. So says do not use. I had them check the the bearing out of round, etc. And uh, yeah, this one is bad. So you can notice how everything is just cast in, in coloration and, and tone. The balanced, once they're balanced, this one is the replacement for that one. It has absolutely nothing done to it because this one was the lightest overall rod. So both ends apparently must have been lighter weight than the rest of the, the rods that were with the motor. So he left this one alone and based the balancing off of this rod. So it ends up being the rest of them get ground in various areas. I see two edges ground here, uh, a little bit there, a little bit there. Sometimes they'll go here, but it doesn't look like he did, probably because of the rod bolt thread, he didn't have enough material there. Um, but you can see this side is all shined up and ground. Along with that, I had them size the bushings to make them appropriate size for the pins. And it uh, turns out they were all tight according to the new pins. So everything is set to its proper size and should be good to go. I just got to uh, clean all the parts off and coat them in WD and then we'll be set to assemble. this piston here and it does not have any grind marks whatsoever in it other than the factory spot so you see right here in that center spot there's a spot there but look right above where the wrist pin goes there's no marking there okay then we have this one here see the, the spot right above that or, yeah above the wrist pin because the piston sits like this See how that's got that mark cut into it? That's the, the balancing that he had to do. That's how much material he had to cut away from each side. Then we have this one here, okay? And you'll notice something different. See where the mark is? I'll spin it slow. See where the mark is on that side? Notice the mark is shifted this way. So when he balances these things, he uh, goes to the extreme of not just setting it on a scale and going, okay, I gotta make it X number of weight. He actually takes the time to hold one end up, set the one end on the scale, see what it weighs, then hold the other end, see if there's a unevenness to the piston, and uh, he'll actually take the time to counter it as much as he can realistically um, to make sure that when it gets pushed on the, the wrist pin here, that the center line of the wrist pin isn't going to have extra weight, say, on this side, and it'll be harder for it to push up on that side, causing skirt wear. So he tries to make the skirt wear minimal. Uh, he goes to the extent of balancing that well. So that's why I like to use this guy. He is really precise with his work. Um, everyone, I've caught him in a mistake once, but you know, everybody makes mistakes. So I will go ahead and uh, put these back in the box and get them cleaned up. Uh, they look, yeah, they're new, I get it, but I still clean just in case there's somehow a little chip of something or whatever from his shop in here. So I'm still gonna clean them and then uh, I don't have to clean them as much. I'll put them back in the box, set the box over where the other parts are, and we'll continue. Another note I want to make is normally this guy, he takes the wrist pins even. He goes as far as the wrist pins. Normally when I get this box from him, he has the wrist pins sitting with the piston, 
and that's because sometimes the wrist pins are just a little bit off a half a gram or whatever so he'll match the wrist pin weight to the actual piston weight to make it as close as possible to being exactly the same on all of them So this one I already had nice and clean. I had it all dry and perfected. Um, these parts still had their oil on them, so they were a little bit dirty. And uh, I showed you just one little bit of me blowing these out. I blew everything out. So every time I left that parts washer, I was blowing parts out and making sure that they were perfectly spotless. So I have these all nice and shiny and clean and beautiful. So with that said, I will get these covered up. And uh, I'm going to take some towels, cover these up really nice to keep any debris from getting in there. Uh, the nice thing is that now that they are clean and dry, they will not collect debris. You know, if you have oil on something, that oil tends to collect the debris pretty easily. Well, it has reached the end of the day today. I got the block. I have the studs, which unfortunately I ordered the wrong ones in the first place. Uh, so, small block Chevy or small block LS, one main stud kit is what they ended up selling me at the machine shop because apparently I somehow accidentally ordered small block Chevy LS WP Warhawk LS Aluminum Block MSK, whatever the heck that is. Uh, he's thinking it's like a Warhawk block or something, I don't know, uh, maybe a World Block. I didn't even look at them, I just got them in the mail and assumed they were right. I'm going to take a look quick here. Oh wow, they are way different. Goofy looking. They have this different size thread here. That is an unusual looking stud. Not even close to long enough, I can tell that much right away. Oh, and these little bolts for the sides are way smaller. Weird. Yeah, those definitely aren't right. Um, so yeah, i got to send these back now. I don't know, maybe they just sent me the wrong stinking ones, or if I actually ordered the wrong ones by accident. But somehow I ended up with the wrong ones. So I'll get that corrected. But the main was line hone. The bores are bored out 20 thousandths over, and the deck was trued up, and the rest of the block looks good, so now I just got to take it and do the assembly, and uh, hope you guys can join me for the assembly part of this, this motor on the next video that I uh, provide for you. Thanks for watching.